Believe it or not, I've never done a classic tapestry tutorial on this channel, but today that changes and we're gonna weave a little landscape tapestry. Let's get started. First, I grabbed one of our spruce and linen mini looms. I double warped it with a total of 30 warp strings using 4-8 cotton warp string. Remember, a double warp just means we're putting two strings into each notch. Before we can start weaving, we have a couple of things to do. We need to weave in a piece of cardstock to have something sturdy to beat down our weft onto. Grab a length of your first color, I'm using this dark green, and weave in a row of twining, tightening it up as you go. Now we're ready to add the pattern to the warp. I'm using a water-soluble marker to mark my pattern on the warp, but you can use any marker you have on hand since we're going to be covering up the warp strings anyway. Grab five colors of medium weight yarn. I'll be using Lion Brand Woolies for each color. And I'm going to change the backdrop here because I just realized that you really can't see my marks on the warp string, so let's switch to a lighter one. From here, we'll be using Plain Weave, following the lines of the pattern we drew onto the warp to create the shapes. The key here is to have all of your weft strings nice and horizontal. We are not weaving at an angle. We are not weaving on the curve. We're keeping everything nice and horizontal. Now we're onto the second color. So we're gonna talk about how to start this row. So you can see in my previous green, this is all going straight across. And then we have our first coming in to create this angle right here. So we have that first loop. That means we need to weave in a row of plain weave up to that loop. So we are not intertwining the rows of color, we are butting them up against each other. So this row ended on this warp string, so we're gonna end the orange on the one next to it. Now we need to pay attention to what the green is doing next. So the next thing the green is doing is there's two loops right here with the green. So that means we're gonna need two orange loops next to it. So we have one going up until here. And then we need another orange loop right on top of the previous one, butting up against the second green one as well. Continue lining up those orange rows with the green rows to fill in this shape. Don't worry about following your pattern to perfection. If your rows aren't lining perfectly up with each mark that you made, that is totally fine. Let's strive for precise here, not perfect. There's a tiny little section right in here that didn't match up with this side or this side, so I need to fill it in just right here. So I'm gonna start right about here, and this is really only one row, which is a little bit annoying, but I wanna make sure that I get this right. And then I can just weave that in there. And the other tail will be going out this way. So you're, you're really just filling it in as you need. And because we had more of a U shape here, it required us to have multiple parts of this going on for that reason, because we always have to be starting at the lowest point, work up to where we can, and then if it's curving, we might have to fill in little sections like I just did here. After the orange, I'm gonna use the gold to fill in the next mountain, starting at the lowest point and working my way up. For the very last mountain, I'm using a light pink, beginning again at the lowest point of the shape and weaving all the way up to the top. So here's an issue that just came up. See how we can see the warp string right here? That is because, Let's just lift this up. In this previous row of the yellow, it was the yellow was going under the warp string, and then again, the way this lined up, the pink was also going under the warp string. So here's how we can sort of cheat that to cover up that warp string. We're gonna undo what we just did, and all I'm gonna do, so where it's coming under that warp string, I'm going to underneath loop it around, So now it sort of covers up that area so we don't see the warp string anymore. And then we can keep going with our plain weave and that will be nice and covered up. The last color I'm using is this really pretty light blue color for the sky. We need to fill in all those low points between the mountain peaks separately. Once all those areas are filled in, we can start weaving back and forth across the entire warp. I run into a little issue. When I try to line this up, this section with this section, you can see that I'm gonna end up going through the same warp strings as the previous weft, which we do not want. So I'm going to cheat this a little bit. We're gonna squish that down really firm. 
This is where leaving your tails a little bit long is helpful. And I'm going to thread that back up and I'm just gonna weave it part way down. We'll stop right about here. That should be good there. So I'm weaving that back in just a few strings. Even though it's more rows than we actually needed, that's what I needed to do in order to get this next row lining up with that one. So that's one thing that can be kind of tricky when you're working in separate sections, but you see now how in the previous row we were going under this warp string, now we're going over, which is what we want. You can make the sky as tall as you want. I'm gonna end mine so the entire length of my piece is about four inches long. Now that you've finished the sky, cut a new piece of yarn and weave in a row of twining to lock everything in. We're almost ready to get this off the loom and into a frame, but first we need to tuck in all of these ends. You'll want a small metal yarn needle like this one for tucking in the ends since our rows are so tightly woven together. Trim off the excess nice and close to the weaving, but be really careful not to cut into the actual weaving. Now that we're all finished the project, we're gonna switch back to the old background and finish this up. Now we can grab our markers again and we can mark off a straight line to cut off the weaving. I want my little fringes to be about three quarters of an inch long. Brush out those tassels with a string brush or even a cat brush, they're very similar, to make them nice and fluffy and you can always trim off any fuzz that you created doing this. Now we are ready for framing. Trace the insert or glass from your picture frame onto some watercolor paper or whatever thick paper you have on hand and cut it out. Set your weaving onto the paper and mark out your placement. You can eyeball it, you can measure it, you do you, whichever you prefer. For this next part, you can either use a needle and thread, or if you want the quick finish, you can use some hot glue. There's no shame in using hot glue. What I ended up doing is I actually turned the paper over and made myself some lines for where I wanted to stitch it in, and then I kind of pre-poked in some holes for where I wanted to sew. I only sewed in about four stitches on the top and four on the bottom, and I did sort of try to strategically sew this to hold down some of the warp strings that were sticking out in a funny way. Once you have attached the weaving to your paper with whichever way you chose to do it, you can put it in the picture frame with or without the glass. I opted for without the glass because I really like that there's no glare and you can really see the texture of the piece. Click here to watch this video next. I think you're gonna like it.